going on everybody welcome back to our channel it's your girl bex and i'm carly and we're here to deliver content to unlock your mindset and actions to be limitless don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and like we always say ring the bell notification so you can get notified when we're dropping videos just like this awesome Okay, so this week we're going to go slightly off what we normally do. Um, sometimes we like to throw in some, you know, work-related tips, different topics. This week we are going to be covering the four-day work week. Um, and this isn't a new topic, so it has been something that has definitely been going around for a few years. But I think COVID has very much pushed a lot of companies in this discussion back to the forefront. So... On the 1st of September, Scotland um, have announced that they are to trial a four day work week, but without loss of pay. So a report out um, includes some ideas for how it could be done, drawing on ex experience in Iceland and New Zealand. Reduced hours don't have to be taken weekly and they could be targeted at particular groups um, such as parents. However, this is not a one trick policy that delivers the necessary boost to productivity that is necessary to pay for it. Improve an employee's sense of well being and therefore their output requires the remaining 80% of hours to be well managed. So, yeah, as said, this is not being, uh, this isn't new, but it's nice to see it come over here because I've not really heard of it, a test being done here. I've heard of Iceland, obviously, New Zealand. Spain as well. So Spain, yeah. uh, the government have uh, committed to a three-year trial of a 32-hour week with 200 companies. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, and that's something that I was reading about, about whether you will work longer days in the four hours. I mean, sorry, longer hours in the four days or whether you would actually just go to a 32 hour week and whether how that impacts. So I was reading from the four day week global who are based in New Zealand and they said that 63% of businesses um, found it easier to attract and retain talent with the four day week. Um, and then also in, in that same report, it said about 78% of employees that are working the four day week are happier and less stressed as well. So there are lots of different, like you said, the work-life harmony, um, productivity as well. But I don't know, how would you feel about a full week? Four I day, love it. Would you work longer? I would work longer hours to have the full, for, to have the full, like, so there's two things. I would love to have just the day off and work 32 hours and get paid yeah. the same, obviously. But I wouldn't mind working 10 hour days to have that. The, yeah. Like, so this was actually one of the the topics that I was looking at and they were talking about it's not designed for you to still do the 48 hours uh, though like you're saying some companies are actually saying well we still want the five days but maybe we do like a five or six hour day but I think a lot more companies want to have the four hour day at reduced hours so you wouldn't do well obviously it's different in different countries but we wouldn't do the 40 um, hours and this is what they're saying it's the wrong approach to go okay, fine, but you can do all your work because that 10 hour day, if I do t t four days or 10 hours becomes 12 hours and whatever else, when we're already yeah. doing eight and then an extra two. So we're already pushed to 10. You're just going to push it even more and you're not really changing anything. So yeah. I, I definitely want the four, four day, 32 hours. Cause I already know, and it's just the nature of our jobs. It, we will definitely do extra hours. It's a given, <laughs> but I definitely find come a Sunday, um sunday sort of four so approaching four five o'clock i'm like oh, it's over already like that extra that one extra day i think just really would just be nice it'd be lovely i honestly i i um i really think that it'll be it'd be interesting though because if, if you're already overwhelmed with your five hours working how is it gonna go if you lose a day do you get what i'm saying because that's yeah. even another thing like Sometimes I'll be panicking when it's first day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still got all of these things that I want to do like by the end of the week. Do you get what I'm saying? So I don't know if it, like I know that reports are saying that people feel less stressed and stuff, but it only it's only really going to work if your, I guess productivity goes up and you find leaner ways of working. Definitely. But also if your, your company is reducing the workload at the same time, hand in hand, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's a bit. So I read something that the I know in the UK, the average worker is only actually productive for a couple of hours a day anyway. 
mm. and the UK is considered quite a, an, an idle um, country. If you look at productivity, we, we're not uh, as good as other countries. But the, there was a, a private company who tested this in New Zealand um, pre-COVID and they saw a 20% improvement in productivity. Um, Work-life balance improved. So they basically saw people said went from 54% to feeling uh, to 78%, um, more a uh, 7% reduction in stress. And then, um, and the company actually then made it permanent because they saw all the positives for this. And then like another report was saying, you given that extra day would mean more spending. So if you allow people, hey, I'm still gonna give you more money. You've got an extra day when most people go and spend on the weekends, go on trips, tourism and all that stuff. We'll go to shopping or whatever because they're too busy or too tired in the week. You've given them an extra day to spend money. So actually that was one of the other things that was being spoken about, which obviously the government loves when people spend money. Um, so yeah, there's that side of it. There was a, a one mentioned customer satisfaction. I think there was a, a concern that, um, you know, you can't get hold of customer service on a Friday. But for me, I think if you approached it to your company and said, right, who wants to do Monday to yeah. Thursday and who wants to do Tuesday, Friday? 100% you'll get a balance. Even yeah. if it's a 60, 40 or 70, 30, you will still get the two, which will allow you to then manage a situation. And even if you had to kind of make a few people maybe do the one a day, I think they still appreciate the day off. Like it's yeah. an extra day. But again, like you can always overcome that and you can just enforce a flipping rota. Like, exactly. You There's just, always ways yeah, around it. Like, do you get what I'm saying? One week you have Monday off, next week you have Friday off, so on and so forth. Um, Platform London, which is a UK-based environmental and social, social justice company, also uh, released a report detailing that working shorter weeks um, will also reduce the carbon footprint um, exactly. greenhouse gas as well. Yep. Um, and there was, um, so since COVID, more people are pushing for this. So in the UK, um, out of 2000 people that were asked, 64% of people were behind, uh, the trial, but there was still 13% that was against it. So it's yeah. interesting to, to know that there's actually still people out there that don't yeah, want yeah. a four day. But then are those people managers? or company owners yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Cause this is what a lot of people are saying. Like the whole issue with seeing people, people feel like they're managing when they're looking at you. I can see what's being done, but there's there's that level of trust. There's ways of measuring and, and checking um, performance. But I had to look at the work week. Cause I thought, this is what I thought was interesting. Like we're saying, you know, am I going to do four days, 10 hours, which becomes 12 or whatever. Um, and this was a breakdown of the top 37 nations. I think this was a couple of years ago, um, but number one is Denmark. And they work on average, uh, 37, they work 37.2 hours per week. Mm-hmm. Only 2.3% said they worked 50 hours plus. And they get an average annual pay of $55,000. So compare that to the UK, which is 41.8 hours a week, 12.2% say they work 50 hours plus and $44.7K thousand dollars a year. And then the last on the list of that top 37 was Colombia, who worked 49.8 hours per week on average where uh, the 26.6% saying they work more, they didn't have the average pay there, but um, it's just interesting to see like the the differences there and the fact how low, only 2.3%, like for me and what we do, it's like a given that you're working extra hours. Like there's just so much on. Yeah, you. the thing is like, obviously there, there's just jobs and our job is a job that doesn't finish. It, it doesn't yeah. finish. Like, so, at the end of the day, we also have to remember that as well, like yeah. that tomorrow the work is still going to be there. So no matter what you do to, today, you're still probably going to have to do a similar tasks tomorrow as well. So you yeah. have to like just really try and like draw that line and find that balance as well. Like obviously if you've got like critical tasks, like you had something that you had to rush off to today, like you have to do something, like you can't just leave it till tomorrow. No, to exactly. One. 100%. There's definitely, there's different elements to it, but... I mean, I'm just going back to what I said about being overwhelmed and stuff and understand that with productivity, obviously you get more work done, but still like I would be interested to see how they balance that out because I know that I would probably still get overwhelmed 
knowing that I'm only supposed to work eight hours a day, only in four hours to try and fit in all of my work. Do you get what I'm saying? Even yeah. if my productivity goes up. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. I think they definitely will need to look at how they kind of coach their teams, like you say, in terms of just general processes or technology that can help with the efficiency by losing those hours. Um, just ways in which tips to better sort of manage your time. I know when I've got a day off, I seem to get so much done because I like I have to get this done. Yes. However, sometimes that does mean I'm working stupid hours yes. in order to do it. But at least I know, right, I'm off for the day now and I've got that extra or that long weekend. So it definitely needs to be to be looked at and balanced. And I think um, uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting, which I'll read to you now, is like they're saying, the um, we've worked this, sh this schedule for over 100 years and it hasn't changed. So it is about time that we revisit it. So um, one of the things that I was, um, when I was sort of researching this topic was they were saying, it was, it was Henry Ford, who's very much known for kind of introducing it. So on the, May the 1st, 1926, Ford Motor Companies became um, one of the first companies in America to adopt a five day, 40 hour week for workers in the automotive factories. The policy would be expanded to Ford's office workers the following August. Um, Henry Ford's Detroit-based mobile um, automobile company had broken um, ground in its labour policies before. In early 1914, against the backdrop of widespread unemployment and increasing labour unrest, Ford announced that it would pay its male factory workers a minimum wage of $5 per eight-hour day, upped from a previous rate of 2.34 um, for nine hours. Uh, the policy was then adopted for female workers a couple of years later, in 1916. The news obviously shocked the industry. Um, $5 per day was nearly double what the average auto worker made. But it turned out to be a stroke of brilliance, immediately boosting productivity, not surprised, mm -hmm. along with the assembly line and building a sense of company loyalty and pride among Ford's workers. The decision to reduce the work week from six to five days had originally been made in 1922, according to an art article published in the New York Times that March. Um, Henry Ford's son and the company's president explained that every man needs more than one day a week for rest and recreation. Exactly. So, because so, I thought, so they, people were working more hours and then they cut it down to the five Longer days. Five. Yeah. So they're saying one day is not enough. People were naturally working six six days a week and i know there's still some countries that's very normal um yeah. to do that but obviously they've gone but but even now like i think we've had this discussion before where we've gone who said i have to have five days in the office and then just two yeah. days chilling out like where did that come from and then even i was sort of breaking down some numbers let's say you work 40 hours a week i don't know you finish at 5 30 um it's, you, know, you finish at five, get home by 5.30. And let's say, I don't know, you spend time with the family till, till um, 9.30. That's only four hours. Yeah. And then times five, that's 20 hours. So that's 20 hours you've spent during the day with your family. I don't know, let's call it a 12 hour, 12 hour wake up at nine together till 10 o'clock or something, 12 hours. Then that's 24 hours on Sunday and Saturday. So in total, that's 44 hours. And we all know we do more than 40 hours at work. That's not yeah, right. That's, that's actually interesting. That's not Great right time. at all that you spend that much time. You spend more time and quality time, if you think about it, when you're knackered at the end of the day and yep. you're like, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to take the, 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 you're knackered. So it's not proper time, not dedicated quality time. You spend more time of that productive and better time for your mind with your colleagues and your own family. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. It's it is, really it, sad. It really is sad, you know, because like you say, you know, you're tired. Maybe the last thing you want to do is have a deep conversation in the evening. And do you know what I mean? Like, and especially when you've got kids, so you can, you already know from growing up how you, what your parents were like when they finished work. The last thing that they wanted to do is come and play, play with you and your toys at five, six o'clock in the evening, seven o'clock in the evening. They're trying to get you to bed as early as possible. Do you get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> It's like there isn't enough time, like, you know what I mean? And it'll be interesting to see what that impact has as well. Um, definitely, definitely. Um, and it'll be nice to see if more companies kind of step up the plate and um, 
trial it out and and more let's see if it turns from a trial to reality which would be good but i think you're going to share some tips obviously if you yeah. were to reduce it there's obviously some tips um to share that we'd all probably need to adopt in how to to better balance your time yeah so like we said with less time obviously productivity is super important but productivity in general is important and i think that we can really reduce our stress and all that feelings of overwhelm if we actually take some tips and actually work on our productivity and schedule our day properly okay so there's a few different sections like tech clothes and some hacks so with tech um one of the things that um i saw was about limiting your time when you're sending emails so you don't need to be on your emails every second if you're working on something so like maybe have time blocks throughout the day um then limit your time on your personal phone i think that's one thing since we've all been working from Everybody. home spending a lot more time on our uh, personal phones and then also find out some useful keyboard shortcuts as well because that can save a lot of time actually clothes so de- define your fashion uniform maybe you already have a uniform um but if you don't already decide what you want to wear and just wear it daily because then it's less one less thing to think about and one less decision that you have to make um and also carry all occasion web like clothing with you as well so you're not like fumbling around the office thinking oh my gosh like it's raining what am i going to do you're thinking about that you already covered so it's just little things that limit your distraction um visualize your like so now i'm going on to some hacks start before you feel ready so don't always just wait till you feel ready um just get going visualize your end product um this is a this is a maybe i don't know let's see assume you are right when in doubt because decisiveness is um product productive so i thought that was quite cool and i think it's something that i will take away is just like always overthinking what you're writing yeah. just send oh, it said that. Anyway, let me just check with so and so like like yeah yeah yeah. No, nah, someone's going to tell you. Um, if you have a, a mind block, make a mind map. Um, if you cannot write it, record it. So again, one of the things like if you sometimes you get stuck and the rest of it, but you can think about what you want to say and then go back. Um, in regards to your body, so managing anxiety, do exercise. So make sure that you're exercising. Sleep more and you'll get more done. And take naps when energy is low. So obviously, if you're working in an office environment, if you're on the shop floor, it's a little bit harder, but we all have breaks and they say 10 to 15 minute nap is actually really, really beneficial. Not a three hour nap like me. Um, (laughs) um, And then your schedule. So prioritize one item per day and get the most important one done um i do prioritize more than one item per day there's no way that i can just say right i just need to make sure i get this thing i have maybe three Uh, yeah three things maybe that i have um that i definitely want to get done set a daily routine so again start like set up your your to-do list set the time that you're going to check your emails so on and so forth just have a schedule block out focus sessions for deep work so i actually spoke we spoke about this at work the other day um and it's just about blocking out your calendar for an hour or two hours where you can really focus on a doc or um project planning or something like that um limit your meetings to less than 15 minutes if you can um and don't have meetings unless they're going to be decisive and if you are having a meeting and you need a decision make sure you've got the decision maker on the actual meeting um, and it's better done than perfect. Going on to food, um, so make sure again you have a routine and it's healthy. Um, this one, th- there was a couple that I was just like, I'm not too sure about this, but I know that you definitely do this. So get delivery um, to save time. Uh, however, obviously that's not going to be so good on your uh, pocket, but <laughs> I bet it saves you time not having to cook and it stuff. It does, it does, and I don't do it all. It will be when I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to cook tonight, and it, and I will order, yeah, to to plan that. But you're right, you've got, you've got a limit, and you don't want to get in the habit of that as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so you could just meal prep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in regards to your mind, so we've got the eighty twenty, which we've already spoke about previously. So um, really identify where twenty percent of your work produces the eighty percent of the results. Um, and then obviously the Eisenhower productivity matrix, the urgent, important, not urgent, important, urgent, not important. Urgent. 
etc um so just really that's a good way of um doing your to-do list as well so you can just draft it out um and then treat your time as money as well so really just be um be aware of what you're spending your time on um one of the things that i started do was tracking my time and seeing how long certain tasks take me um and stop multitasking as well just do, like if you're gonna if you've got a lot of things on you're working on different projects then set the time so 30 minutes 30 minutes or an hour 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 Definitely. and yeah these are just some of the um some of the tips i had for productivity have you got any that you personally no i think some recently what's worked for me is like you say i don't think having that one thing but prioritize so if there's one thing that is obviously the most important put that at the top so i usually will make a list of five things i need to achieve for the day and obviously priority that top one and try not to do because you're putting it off like get it done especially at the beginning of the day get it done if you don't finish anything that's fine you just move it to the move it to the the next day but um i'm terrible for multitasking i'm terrible i'll be in the middle of something get pinged distracts me then i'm like oh damn i forgot to do that so try and avoid that finish something finish that email finish writing that paragraph whatever it is and then right that's done next thing definitely and i think routine's key there's certain tasks that i have to do at the start of every day um so that's part of routine and standard work which obviously we know is very you know a lot of companies do that standard work yeah yeah the multitasking one is it is it's terrible especially when you're like working on projects and things like that it, it's super difficult i could have like three emails open chime a doc something else and i'm just like oh yeah i was doing this like but yeah definitely just finish um so that's the end of this week's video thank you so much for tuning in let us know your thoughts on the four day work week and also drop some productivity tips in the comments so we can share it as well i've been your girl vex and i've been carly thank you so much for watching this week's episode and we will see you next week peace Thank you.